Hello everybody, good morning. It is 9.41 a.m. on Saturday, February 24th, 2024. Um, thank you for joining me for today's daily devotional where I keep myself responsible for diving into God's word um, and hold myself accountable for doing so. So if you are here with me through that, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, Today's devotional passage comes from Jeremiah. Let me go to it. I should have had this open. Um, Jeremiah 586. Okay. It's uh, Jeremiah 29 verses 11 through 13. I have a few notes here about this. Um, not a too whole lot, to be quite honest. I didn't have a whole lot to say because this is a these passages, these verses are more exclusively about how God operates, and I'm not going to claim to even understand how He operates and things, but. I, I know what his promises are, and that's what these verses are. Again, Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. So, the kind of the pretext or the backdrop for this is that this was, so Jeremiah was a, a prophet, or a uh, kind of a, a speaker on behalf of, of God and things. Um... And during this period, the Israeli people, or the, the Israeli people, sorry, forgive me, the Israelites were doing a, a whole lot of bad things that were going against God. Um, one of them, the one that comes to mind, like in the immediacy of talking about their bad things, was uh, was idolatry amongst other things that shouldn't be idolized. Um, um, and they were captured, and they were you know, they were conquered and carried off into exile and things by, I believe it was, um, Nebuchadnezzar or something, whatever his name is. Um, the whole pretext of this is that backdrop is like, those are the things that were happening and, um, and that's what ended up happening to them. What God is saying here though, it is is kind of important. God is not saying, oh, you are now captured, you're left to your own whim, sucks to suck. No. What God is saying here is that there will be consequences to actions that you have partaken in, partook, partaken in, <laughs> and there will be a period of time where this will be what you have to live through. Um, you could think of it as a punishment. I don't know if, if if sin is something to be punished. I think it's more something to be corrected. Maybe we can compromise and call it a corrective punishment. Okay? So, but there was a plan to restore Israel. As we understand now through the New Testament and in our modern day, that the, the heart, the body of the church, the body of Israel, is not just exclusively in the country of Israel. It is the entirety of the body of Christ. Um, and so as such, there are everybody who is a true, faithful, loving, heartfelt Christian is included in this Israelite people, I suppose. Not exactly geographically, of course, because there's Christians all over the world and things, but of the time translated to now, the land of Israel is everybody who follows God, who follows Christ. 
now what the verses are saying directly in response to this is that I mean and when you if you search for me I, so it's a it's a keeping up of God's promises um, God throughout the entirety of the Old Testament and of course in the New Testament with Jesus as well made a boatload of proscriptive promises to innumerable forms of people and his whole idea behind this set of verses is that he is going to keep those promises it's not going to be just some hidden idea it's not going to be some weird thing it's not going to be something that's a secret in particular but it will be a uh, a promise that is kept of course by god um because, again, for I, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. An expected end. Not a, a surprising, not a end that's gonna, oh, no way, you know, it's an expected end. And then in, in verse 13, skip in verse 12, and ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all of your heart. It's saying, just in, in many words, I suppose, when you look for me, I am there. That's the end. It's not saying, oh, you got to make sure you do this thing, oh, and then put the thing, and then, oh, idolize a pig, and then do all that. No, it's, if you search for me, you will find me. The applicability of this goes far beyond just the the geographical and historical motives of the of the world of the time it goes to now if ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart with all your heart that verse specifically if somebody looks to god with all of their heart i have mentioned this in previous daily devotionals too if somebody searches for god with all of their heart They will find God. They have to be heartfelt about it. They got to be willing to accept. They got to be willing to kind of ingest everything that God is is telling them, you know. But in the end, if somebody looks for God with their heart, they're going to get him. There's something to be said about the academic study of, like, the Bible and, like, how God has operated. Okay, that, that's one way to do it, I guess. But it needs to be heartfelt. It needs to be something that you really feel emotively that's welling up in you that you want to do kind of thing. And then verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me? And ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I will come upon you. I will go to you. If you pray for me. And of course, got to do it heartfeltly. Got to do it with heart. <laughs> and that's really the whole of the law with this verse. There's not a whole lot to parse and participle with this. God's promises, though, are fulfilled every time. I mean, the one that we all think of, the, the one that's just the one, is the rainbow that Jesus, or, well, I guess, yeah, Jesus, that, but the, that God the Father gave to Noah so he wouldn't ever flood the earth ever again. That's one that, I mean, that's the one that everybody knows about, but there's innumerable other promises even in the New Testament where everybody would be living on earth as in heaven, you know. Because, again, the rapture isn't biblical. But God's promises are fulfilled every single time.
every single time? No doubt about it. Maybe it's one of these verses or one of these devotionals where we got to go really microscopic into it. Not like broad socio-geographical types of peoples, not the historical or the historicity of a certain event, but the promises to you, to me, to your neighbors. Look at it from a questionable stance. Is this a prescription for just Christian peoples? No. This is a prescription for everybody. Then, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. That's not talking to Christian peoples. That's talking to everybody. When you zoom in microscopically like that, you can really start picking apart what is really being said here. So when you think, oh, God wouldn't do that to this person. They're too evil. Oh, God wouldn't. Would they really? Would God really? One, it's crazy to claim that you know what God will do. That's wild. But two, it says here, in perfect harmony with his promise, that if you call upon him with all of your heart, fruitfully, meaningfully, honestly, and earnestly, I will hearken unto you. That's powerful. That's real. That's in the Bible. Saith the Lord. <laughs> it's not saying that, oh, this Peter that said this. No, it's saith the Lord. Anybody that calls upon God, that says, Christ, I am for you. I am completely indebted to you. I am on this earth for you, to glorify you, to spread you amongst the world. That person, if they're saying it in earnest, will be welled up with the glory and the Holy Spirit. Will be granted that mercy that we don't deserve, that's granted, again, as a gift to us, but even so. That's powerful. And again, to be very clear, it's not talking about Christian peoples. It's not talking about, oh, this certain type of person. If that person calls upon God earnestly and honestly, they will be saved. And that's the end. Of course, they're still going to be inebriated in sin. They're going to have to really pray on it and work their way out through everything. But God's promise is far and wide stronger than any sin can be. It's just up to us to take that promise and move with it instead of pushing against it. I think a lot about my conversion. And how that was a promise fulfilled. I don't know exactly... I don't know at all God's plan and how it, how he wants to prosper throughout the world. 
and I think a lot about how God's plan was worked during my childhood and through my early adulthood and into my into my adulthood now. And I wonder what all of it was meant to mean. I could confabulate. I could think of, oh, maybe he just wanted me to learn what it's like to live without God or what it was like to be this or what it was like to do things without Christ in mind or something. I have no clue. But I know, but I, I want to be very stern about this. I know it was promise fulfilled when God came to me after having those doubts after having so many questions and I called out to him for the first time in way back in 2022 feels like an eternity ago but it wasn't even two years ago at this point and I asked I was like hey God what is this what am I meant to do I remember <laughs> I remember going on a walk the next day and the wind was windier. The smell of the air was more potent. The world felt brighter. I could like, it's like the, the, the lyric from the song is kind of like a meme, but I could literally like feel like I was seeing clearer. Things felt more in perspective of me, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but it truly felt like I was more in tune with how the world was and what was happening. And it felt like I was being picked up and, and propped up to do good works amongst the world. And it took me a really long time to sort of ingest that and kind of work my understanding into it. And I, I read my Bible every day, not just for these devotionals, but I, I go through chapters and try to work my way through things. I do these daily devotionals. Now it's quite late for those, of course. Um, it's been quite a long time since I made my public conversion, but... Even so, I've tried to consult, you know, church resources, people on YouTube, you know, Redeemed Zoomer is a YouTube channel I like, Wise Disciple, um, Breaking in the Habit, Ascension Presents, a newer one is, is Holy Heretic. But all of that is, is nothing doesn't mean a single blip if it wasn't for God's promise. God's promise is always fulfilled if you call upon him in earnest. I think about that a lot. I kind of knew this, and I think every Christian sort of knows this, but I think about that a lot. I am just measly old me, 27, not really done a whole lot in my existence. I've released music. I've moved around a lot. I've had really shitty friendships. I've done some really bad things and said some really gross things. I've, of course, matured through that. I, I, I want to think that I haven't said those things or done gross things in a long time, but who knows? measly old me and I still have some work to do I still have to massage in what my calling is but measly old me anybody can call upon Jesus and he will fill them with that love that mercy that grace there will not be a rejection if it is done in earnest and if it is done with the holy, prudent, and, and rich honesty that you have in you or that anybody has in them.
And that's powerful. And then we see another example. I spoke on this yesterday, but we see another example of this when Jesus was getting crucified in his last moments. The thief that said, Jesus, I, I believe in you. I, I want to be with you. And Jesus took him with him. If it is done in the earnest and the honesty of your heart, it will be fulfilled every single time. Every single time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I think about how you saved me and how you saved a bunch of other people all the time. Your grace and your mercy is extremely important and so, so, so good. I pray and I ponder too about who you're going to save and how you're going to do it. I love seeing your works upon the world, Lord. I love reading the testimonies and seeing people come to church and all that good stuff, Lord. I know your promises are, are rich in your grace and are always fulfilled every time. As we learn from the, the verses today, this... I mean, Jeremiah spoke on it, and you spoke on it. It doesn't just mean Christian peoples. It means every single person. You will not reject your people, Lord. I am sure that there are examples of some heinous people that have been converted to you, Lord. I'm sure it's the worst, like murderer, prisoner people or something. I mean, the, the famous one is Jeffrey Dahmer. He very famously converted. And by all, you know, sensical accounts, he truly converted. He got baptized, attended church every week, had a pastor come out to him, and he confessed and all that good stuff. So, I mean, if you can do it to him, you can do it to literally anybody. Anybody, Lord. And I know your promise is, is fulfilled every time in those people. I pray you continue looking over me and my family here in Florida. And my girlfriend and her family. And all of the extended families out from them, Lord. And the entire world. I know you are graceful. I know you are merciful. And I know you have our best interests at heart, Lord. I thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching today's Daily Devotional, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed being here with me, going through it and praying and hearing me expound upon God's word and such. So if you were here with me through that, I appreciate it. Thank you. Again, I will be doing these Daily Devotionals every single day for as long as I can, hearkening into God's word and doing what I can to share it and, and expound on it in the ways that I can on my end. I'm just a 27-year-old guy, um, but I do the best that I can. <laughs> Again, I appreciate you watching. I will see you in tomorrow's Daily Devotional. God bless.